Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's talk in the Only One Theme talk series. But before we begin, let me wish all of you a very happy new year 2023. Happy and healthy, prosperous new year to all of you. So let us begin the ninth talk in the Only One Theme talk series, which is around innovation management. And today's topic is on patent analytics. Our speaker for today is Dr. Vidula Varimbe. Let me briefly introduce Vidula before we begin. Vidula is currently Associate Manager at Venture Center and is part of the TechX team here at Venture Center. She holds a PhD in law from Symbiosis International and has completed postgraduate diploma in IPR from Nalsar University. Recently, she has been designated with the status of Registered Technology Transfer Professional. Vidula is a biologist by training and has expertise in patent search analysis and technology market assessment. At Venture Center, she is developing uh, uh, technology transfer services for R&D and academic institutions in the Western region of India. She is also facilitating IP and technology transfer services and IP analytics. Previously, she was involved in the role of patent analysis of chemical entities to facilitate generic drug introduction in US market when she was working at Ajanta Pharma in Mumbai. Vidula has also worked with CSI Rurib and her responsibilities involve patent search and analysis. With this brief introduction, welcome Vidula to the session and over to you. Thanks, Mubla. So, uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this ninth series of only one uh, theme where we will be uh, talking today upon patent analytics. Uh, so I will just uh, take you to the overview of what uh, I will be presenting today in this next 40-45 minutes. We will first understand we'll first understand what is uh, patent analytics. So a very brief uh, overview about uh, what it means and how it is done. Then we will uh, try to understand what is search and what are the key concepts during searching. Where do we conduct a search? What are the steps which are involved when we do a patent search? When, uh, why is this patent search required and what are the different kind of patent analytics, uh, analytical reports that are generated uh, from the search will be our next point. Then I will try to elaborate with few example, uh, with few examples, what are these patent analytical reports. So uh, we will try to take only a few uh, to know, you know, how, what is the actual conclusion that we draw from these reports and then a very uh, quick summary of what all we have discussed today. So to begin with, uh, let us first understand what is uh, patent analytics. So analysis is something that we uh, usually examine or we break down information into. So similarly, uh, patent analytics is also a very systematic uh, search of patent data. So whatever uh, we create as a search, we get certain results out of it. So what we do with this uh, search set is we will uh, systematically evaluate this patent data and try to understand different technology and commercial trends. So this could be one application of patent analytics, which will ensure that there is certain implementation, protection, and monetization of the inventions. Now, why is patent analytics is done is uh, to uh, you know understand what can be there in the market. Say someone wants to understand what is the patentability, whether my invention is patentable or not, whether I want when I'm launching new products, are there any existing products in the market? Am I infringing anyone else's product? Before investing into any kind of uh, new uh, invention or thinking about any R and D investments, what I can do is I will go for a patent analytical report, understand what is happening in that given field, and then go for an investment. One can also think about having a IPR uh, portfolio, which can be managed uh, through uh, these kind of search reports and uh, keeping those open for future uh, research. Now, this is a very, uh, you know, uh, in very short that I've explained. So each of these categories that I have explained just now is a patent analytical report. So what are these different analytical reports? We will see down as we uh, go further down the uh, slides. So depending upon one's need or, you know, depending upon one's requirement, one will dis understand which patent analytical report to uh, analyze or to, uh, you know, to develop a patent analytical report. So depending upon that, your search will differ and your databases will also differ. So uh, we'll first try to understand what is the concept of searching. So uh, we all do Google, we have, we, you know, go, go and search for certain kind of information. So what when we look for an information 
any kind of information. This could be on any, any type of document that we usually search on Google. This could be from any place or any period of time. But that doesn't happen when you're uh, going for any kind of technology information. So when you're looking for technical information, there are mainly two sources that we look into. One is the patent source. So the patent uh, documents there where we have uh, scientific information which is there in those documents. And the second part is the scientific and technical information. So this could be in the form of some scientific publications, some research papers which are available online. So in today's session, we will be focusing about finding uh, technical information only through patent documents. So uh, with this, we'll first understand why one needs to perform a patent search. So uh, what is the importance of doing a kind of patent search? First could be you have to determine what is uh, the novelty of an invention. So basically understanding whether I can patent my invention. Avoid reinventing the wheel if someone has already uh, done similar kind of research on what you all, a similar kind of problem that you are working. Could be you can find out other ways in which that problem can be addressed rather than doing the same prior art, which is already there in the public domain. Then it could also help uh, to guide certain investments in R&D. As I said, if you know a technology is uh, there and you know this is what technology uh, down the line it is going to go into the peak. So could be I can invest uh, right away in that technology and uh, end cash when it peaks out. So I can file a few patents on that. Predict what could be the emergent technology. So this is through white space analysis or, you know, understanding where are the gaps in a given technology and start doing research on that. Determine what could be the global innovation. So if a company needs to understand in a given domain, where uh, is the uh, technology heading worldwide, one can determine it through patent search and then create a patent analytical report uh, accordingly. Avoid infringing anyone else's patent. So if there is someone, uh, there is an active patent which is there in a given field and uh, I'm uh, you know, working on the same field and trying to market my product could be I'm infringing on that patent. So to avoid any kind of uh, legal uh, legalities which arise out of it, this can be avoided through a patent search and then a consequent uh, report through it. Track what your competitor is doing. So if a MNC company needs to know what is the other uh, company doing in a given field, uh, we can do this through a patent analytics and identify if there can be some possible uh, collaborations with either uh, other companies or uh, say an uh, investor or a new inventor. So in every of uh, this aspect, uh, there are different analytical reports. So we will uh, discuss a few of them further. Now, uh, where do we go and search uh, patents? So uh, when we do a general kind of search, it is usually we uh, do it on Google. But for uh, patent searches, there are different kinds of databases which are available. These can be, again, divided into two parts. One is the free databases, which any one of us can access. And there is a paid databases, which comes obviously with the fee. So under the fee databases, uh, every patent uh, office, so the National Patent Office of every country they have their own database now uh, i have mentioned here is pat scope this is the wipo database then there is a uspto there is e uh, es uh, ep uh, space net this is for the european uh, patent filing and the impasse that is the indian patent filing even through google patents and lens.org uh, we can conduct a patent search on uh, these three databases and for the paid databases uh, there is orbit Derwin, pat uh, base, FATSEER, STN, uh, SciFender. Now, why these databases are different uh, from the paid databases? Though uh, the uh, same number of uh, patents are there in both of the cases, in case of paid databases, these uh, patent uh, data or the information is even further analyzed and given in a very uh, easy, friendly uh, way to the user. So it becomes you know a bit uh, easier for the user to analyze, to understand, and to shortlist the results from the given uh, data structure. For if there is a search that needs to be very specific, you know, to, uh, to, to say chemical structures, Marco structures, so there are databases available for the same also. This can again be done on SciFinder, STN. Uh, there is also on Scope that is a WIPO database. Now they are providing a Marco and chemical structure searches available. Similarly, for biosequences and traditional knowledge uh, databases are also available. 
Now, when we start conducting a search, where are the fields in a patent that needs to be searched? So, could be all the fields may not be relevant uh, to what question has uh, the user needs to answer. So, if I say I want to search an assignee, so why do I search an assignee and not search uh, from the title? So, it's very important to understand that when we select a search pivot field in a patent, it will exactly answer the question that a person wants to understand from the patent analytical report. So when I say name of an assignee, why, uh, what will I try to conclude is what could be the potential partners, could be, uh, you know, whether uh, it could be the, he's my competitor, I want to know what the competitor is doing, or what is the technology that a given organization or that a given institute is following. If in the other hand, if I say I want to uh, find out an inventor and what the inventor is doing, then in that case, uh, it is specifically to understand what the scientist is working on. So what is the invention or what is the technology that he's working on? If it is a prior art date uh, field that I use, in this case, it is to understand the filing trends in the invention or see who is the one who has filed first. Legal status usually helps to understand what is the patent status, whether it has been granted, whether it is valid, whether it is expired. So this happens, you know, when we are uh, looking, doing kind of an FTO search. So we will uh, see how that is done. Then if uh, there is a field where I want to understand protection, filing and designated countries, then it is, it, it tells me the, uh, it helps me to know what is the global market for a given technology. Uh, then uh, for a description, it, uh, it explains the existing technology. So it, it helps to understand what is a prior art, what is the problem statement that a, a given patent is addressing and how they have approached it. And the claims, they usually uh, they define the legal boundary of the invention. So the unique features of why that invention has been patented is given in the claims. So, you know, when one, one conducts a patent search, it is not that we will be using only one of these fields. It could be a combination of different fields, but it's very important to understand what is the question that one wants to address when they are going for a patent search. So that it cannot be multiple questions and then you want to say that, you know, I want, uh, I will do it in this kind of a search. That doesn't happen. You have to be very specific, very focused to understand what is the output that you require from a given patent search. So uh, searching with keywords. Now uh, we first understood what is search, where to where to search, what to search. Then uh, what are the fields that are involved in these uh, patent searches? Now this is a very uh, broad overview of what operators are used. Why these are used? You know because this will avoid any kind of noise uh, patent applications that might arise. So it could be you know the huge databases there and I have to just find the relevant 10 out of it. So these combinations of different fields and keywords helps me to shortlist on the, uh, relevant, uh, uh, the relevant search results which come out. So uh, and or and not and XOR. So these are the ones which are commonly used. And what the and operator does is it will narrow down my results where both of the words appear in my search. So if I say peanut butter and jelly, so both my words will appear when I give a search saying that peanut butter and jelly. It means that both have to be there in my search. If it is an or operator, it is either of the word. So either it is peanut butter or it could be jelly or it is both of it. So that is how and these search, uh, search combination of these keywords, you know, helps me to retrieve my uh, searches in a given uh, patent uh, document. Then it could be and or not. So I just want one word, but I don't want the other word to appear. So I just want peanut butter to come, but I don't want gel to appear, uh, jelly to appear in my search results. And then it could be, uh, you know, one word and second word, but not together. So that is XOR. Now, how this is used, uh, what combinations uh, in and different fields, how we use it. I'm just putting up all these basics uh, just now because later as we uh, go on further, this will, you know, connect with uh, the search strings that we have used further. Now, uh, how do we conduct a patent search? So it is a uh, very important, you know, as I keep on saying that, you know, please understand what you want to uh, search for or determine what is the search that one needs to focus on. So once that question is uh, focused on or the question is defined, then what is the first phase is a preparatory phase. 
So we just gather the necessary data to conduct the search. So how does this, uh, how that this can be done is by having keywords related to your technology or your theme or the invention. Understand what are the classification codes. These are very specific classification codes which are there in a patent document. So under which category uh, will your search call will be easy if you all know these broad categories, what are they, uh, what is present. If there are any scientific publications, you know, which already cite certain keywords or there are certain which is similar to what you all are searching, find out new keywords from that, synonyms to that, what combinations can be done. Once all this is ready, a search string is prepared using such operators and the fields which we have, there or which or we just saw. So when these combinations are done, a primary search can be conducted on a given database. So it could be a free databases or it could be the paid database. Now, once a search string is given to a database, some kind of results will be retrieved. Now, what we need to do with these results is first, we need to understand whether these results are really relevant to what you all are looking at or relevant to the exact question that, need, that one needs to answer. Okay, so a to and fro uh, needs to be done, different combinations need to be uh, prepared, different search strings need to be uh, prepared in such a case. And then uh, one finds out that yes, this uh, say a uh, hundred set of uh, patents uh, is you know relevant to what I'm looking at and could be these can possibly answer the question that I put forth for a patent analytical report. Now, each and every of this record needs to be analyzed. It needs to be understand, or it needs to be understood very well as to what is the patent saying. Is it really uh, worth what you are looking at? And once this summary is prepared, once this analysis is done, a compilation of this report is uh, done, which has a conclusion in it. So this conclusion should be uh, something which answers the question that you had posted yourself before one conducts this search. Now, uh, I've been saying reports, reports, reports. So uh, with this uh, basic steps of what are, uh, what is search, what are the search fields, what are the different combinations, what are the different databases, different kinds of search and uh, patent analytical reports can be generated through it. And so uh, the first one is patentability report. It could be a freedom to operate report, validity, invalidity search report, a state of art report, and patent, a patent landscape report. Now I've given asterisks to this because uh, further I've explained this with a you know, example so that you know it becomes very clear as to what is the question that I say that we have to answer. Now patent analytical in patent analytical reports first uh, we will see is what is patent ability search report. So what is the question that this report will answer? So in a is a given invention really patentable? This is in terms of the law. Okay, so when I would say I want to understand whether my invention is patentable, what I will do is I'll conduct a patentability search report where this report will assess the novelty, utility, and non-obviousness of my invention. And so the ultimate conclusion that this report will give is whether my invention can be patented or it won't be patented. The second form of report is freedom to operate search report. Now, what happens in this case is this will tell uh, the inventor whether in a given jurisdiction, so from a legal point of view, can I use or market my invention? So it is to ascertain whether there is freedom to operate or the right to operate an invention in a particular uh, country. So it could be India, it could be US. So if there is a patent which is active in these countries, could be I'm not in a position to uh, market my invention. So when uh, I want to do this kind of search, my search strategy will be different and my report conclusion will also be specific only to understand whether an invention is uh, safe from a legal point of view. Now validity and validity searches, uh, this is either to validate you know, the impossibility of a patent claim or to invalidate the claim. So if I have uh, uh, say my own uh, patent and I want to invalidate uh, someone else's so I can use this by doing a patent claim analysis. Okay, then the fourth part is state of art search. This is called as a prior art search. Now in this case, uh, it also includes the non-patent literature. Why? Because uh, this kind of a report tries to answer the question, which technologies are there in a given field? and who is active in a given field of te uh, the technology. So not necessarily all these uh, uh, 
inventors or assignees may file patents could be they also have certain publications so if on a be to be on a safer side to understand what is a prior art it is very important that both the kinds of uh, data information is analyzed and then a report is presented in this case then the last uh, one which is commonly used is a patent landscape search now this is a very broad uh, kind of a search or a broad very broad uh, report because it gives a very uh, overview of what is a patent situation for a given technology in a given country and globally so there are a, a n number of uh, questions which are answered here there are many connotations to this report so we'll take an example of this to see what are all questions does this patent landscape report uh, answer and when such kind of reports needs to be used other than the five reports that i have mentioned about there is also an infringement analysis search which is done citation is also done and white space analysis also is carried out now we've seen all these reports and we'll try to understand uh, when these reports can be used or at which stage of your invention or which stage of a company where can these reports be used so if uh, one has a new idea and wants to go for a patent so it could be a state of art report which also tells what is a prior art uh, which was present so whether my invention will be patentable non patentable so it could be even a, a novelty search report can be done if a company is uh, going in for say uh, putting the product into a different market as i said in a different country we need to understand whether it has a freedom to operate so an uh, company or institute can look for a freedom to operate report if uh, they want to invest into a new understand the portfolio understand what is the technology heading to so they can go into a patent landscape report so these are the different stages or the uh, area, a time when one needs to look at a very specific report and understand which report is applicable at that moment of time so now we will uh, move on to uh, examples of each of this report so the first one which i have taken up is the patent ability search report now why we have uh, taken these reports because these are the ones which are you know commonly used by all of us so uh, as i said initially a patent uh, patent ability search report it is for understanding whether my invention is patentable by uh, by law so it has it is called as a nuns test which is you know which says novelty utility non obviousness statutory and subject matter so whether my given invention falls into uh, you know satisfies all the criteria is what i want to understand by this report so what is the scope of my search anything that is there in the prior art so any prior art killing uh, document if i find which kills my novelty my invention won't be patentable so what is the question that is answered uh, by this report so this is very important that a question be defined when you do these kind of searches is the invention is patentable by law now why to carry it out it is carried out to determine whether a given invention is novel and potentially patentable if there is any lack of novelty in my invention so i uh, if i feel that yes there is something you know i can work on and be by that if i take it further could be i can apply for a patent it also helps us to understand if there is something which is already disclosed the inventive concept is already present in the public so i can work around it and uh, try to see if i take it, take it one step further and to help a product developer to be free from any anticipated infringement suits and also then applicant determines whether to go with the patent application further or not so it helps to you know even uh, consider on a monetary basis so if a patent already exists or there's some prior art which is already there in the uh, in the domain in the public domain it no, it makes no point of going for a patent application and who are the uh, clients or the who is the end user who should perform a patent ability search report could be uh, these could be uh, attorneys ip associates ip managers who handle different kind of uh, ip cases for their clients it could be a startup who is working on a given technology universities before they go to file any of their new technologies or whatever they have developed at their uh, end research organizations and investors so uh, we will explain or try to understand this uh, with a case study now there is a uh, what i have taken as a very basic uh, case study for all of us to understand and this will also help to uh, get cleared all the uh, fields or the search strings that we uh, spoke till now 
So for uh, there's a client request and he wants to understand whether a rack for holding paint brushes on an easel is novel and whether they can file for a patent. So what will uh, be the key question in this case? Okay, so there's a rack for holding paint brushes on an easel. It is uh, so uh, it has to fall by the three criteria of uh, patentability uh, law. First one is well, it should be novel. It should be not obvious, and uh, surely it should have some kind of industrial applicability. Now, how do we go about the search? As we said, the, the, there are steps which we had involved. So first, I try to find out what are the relevant keywords because unless and until we define certain keywords, it will not be easy for anyone to search for them. So in this case, the keywords are could be it is a brush tool, any kind of drawing, an artist, a rack, a support, etc. Okay, so it could be. Uh, even an easel and you know you mentioned it with a asterisk to say whatever the words relevant to it can be appearing. Now uh, the second part is the classification codes. Now as I mentioned that every patent is classified under certain categories and these codes are uh, mentioned on your patent document or it is also available on the uh, WIPO website where they actually tell under which category what are the domains that it covers. So uh, by going through these uh, domains, by going through these codes, I understand that yes, uh, such kind of patents have been filed under say A01K97-10. So whatever is my uh, search that I'm looking for, which is relevant to a uh, paintbrush, uh, which is loaded on an easel can be found under this category. Okay, so these are the uh, first two steps that we carry out to shortlist all our patents. Uh, that is the result set. Then what are the databases where we can use this? Now, as I said, this could be even on your free databases or you can run it on your paid databases. And uh, also, if uh, someone is interested in knowing what is the non-patent literature, they can also run it on Google and the other databases which are available. Now, uh, before, uh, this is the first background study that we need to do when we go for a, uh, any kind of search. Okay, now what we will try to understand now is what is the actual uh, invention or the outline of the invention that the client has proposed. Okay, so what the client says is I have paint brushes and their accessories for the paint brushes have been there uh, in around. So what is the problem that he's trying to address in his invention? So to solve the problem, what the inventor has done is he has created an apparatus that is able to protect the applicator portion of the paint brush when the paint brush is not in use. Okay, so this is uh, well, depending upon whatever is there in the uh, prior art and whatever problems the other people have faced, he thinks that the uh, if you see the uh, point number two, it says that the common problem is the liquid drips on the person's hand, whoever is painting it. So can he develop something that will avoid this kind of a problem? So he's trying to give a solution in his uh, invention. Now, uh, there are two possible claims which have also been drafted around this uh, invention. One is a holder for a crane brush. So it could be an handle, a body, and an applicator. The holder compromising of all the, the description has been mentioned here. And this invention is what? It is a product or a design. Okay, now uh, what, what uh, we have done here is we have taken the uh, keywords. So I just go back to my previous slide. Uh, where there are relevant keywords we have shortlisted, we have given different codes and that the search has been conducted using whatever background study that we have understood. And we realized that from our uh, patent data, uh, from a set of say 100 patents, I find out that there are two documents, two patent documents, which seem to be very close to what concept has been uh, described by the inventor. That is a rack with a brush, which is, uh, which is held on an easel. Okay, so uh, we go through uh, whatever is mentioned in these two patents. So it is mentioned as D1 and D2. So that is how we mentioned with our prior arts that what these patents say. Now, uh, once this analysis is done of each of these patents, what is that has to appear in the report? Because what is my question is, the question that my client is asking in this case is whether my invention is patentable or not. That's all he wants as an answer. So when I give a report, my uh, report should only answer this question. So what does it say? That the concept of, uh, from the analysis, I understand that the brain brush rack is not new. There are many references which are available in the prior art, so whatever analysis that we have done. There are quite a few patents uh, which also uh, use the, the word rubber or foam that has already been mentioned by the inventor in his invention. 
and uh, oh, many of these references teach how the brush should be held so that there is there is no dripping on the hand of the uh, on the hands of the painter so what is the conclusion that we can draw from this is that the mount the changing the mounting surface alone will not considered will not be considered as a non obvious step in this case of um, of this invention so the inventor what he needs to uh, do is the inventor may receive a no novelty and non obviousness and patentability related objection from the patent office during prosecution so in uh, you know a patentability search report with this kind of a comment or this kind of a suggestion by uh, doing an analysis of all the results set that we uh, retrieved will help the inventor well in advance to understand what is there in the prior art so a paint, a paint brush uh, handle with an easel is already there there are certain features which have already been covered so the inventor needs to think what he can do uh, differently to overcome these objection so that is was the aim or that was the question of this patentability search report and this is how it has been addressed now we'll move on to the uh, next uh, uh, one this is the freedom to operate search now this is a very this is a different kind of report than the patentability search report so what is the freedom to operate search freedom to operate is a multi step process to investigate whether a specific action like using selling any kind of your product in a given geographical area at a given time will not infringe on any active patents which are there in that uh, jurisdiction so uh, what it says is that i have a product i uh, from i have developed it in india and i want to go and market in us so what before doing that i need to understand whether there are any active patents on the similar product which are present uh, which is there in us and whether i can really go and market it uh, freely in the us so how do we do this in this case what literature is required is we look at only the active granted patents active granted patents very important and pending patent applications because these are in the process of being granted so it is very uh, important to understand what is their status and how it they will proceed further now what is the question that is answered uh, in this case okay so once when i go for this kind of a report or when i uh, say that i want to understand freedom to operate uh, for my invention the uh, client must understand that uh, what he wants to act, uh, um, know is whether i can practice that invention in one or more countries at a specific time and are there any enforceable patents with claims that would cover their invention is in the given country as in the that is in the uh, given jurisdiction in a intended period of time now who is the person who needs such reports or who should perform such kind of uh, searches or request for such kind of person searches any entity who wants to commercialize their technology or take their product into the market in a different jurisdiction okay uh, when should one do this before taking their product and how do we uh, perform it so this being a very focused kind of search it is important that uh, we follow all the steps so we need, uh, need to understand uh, gather the information which is there to the invention to be searched and uh, plans for how to how one needs to use uh, that kind of technology search for any published patent literature uh, to find potentially relevant patent documents and analyze the scope of the claim this is very important because a claim is the one that is the gives a legal status to the patent so it is very important to understand what is the uh, claim covering and what is the uh, legally what are the boundaries which have been covered in a given patent so there are certain restrictions uh, to this fto search so the date restrictions why it is 20 years because we said that uh, it should have it should be an active patent so uh, life of a patent is 20 years so one needs to understand uh, within that period uh, so one needs to search to understand whether the patent is active and whether we are infringing on it jurisdictional restrictions as i said as we are going into some other country we are marketing in some other country so we need to uh, keep it focused say i want to find only for us i want to find only for india so that search field is also defined here document type as we said it is only patents and the claims of the patents here that needs to be analyzed and also it is important to understand what the claim is covering so uh, this kind of search is a very uh, specific search and well uh, defined kind of search you can say 
Now, uh, I'll just explain this with a very uh, quick uh, case study. What is FTO? So there's a company and uh, they have uh, film delivery systems for uh, buccal oral uh, oral routing for insulin uh, nanoparticles. So uh, this uh, delivery system helps to in, uh, give an insulin through the uh, oral route. And uh, why this is used to control uh, blood glucose regulation or whatever disorders are there in the body. Now, what the company wants to know in this case, the company wants to understand whether they have freedom to operate in the US. So now we will follow all the steps that we defined earlier. We find out different keywords. You can see we have developed a search string. We have used different operators and or, and then uh, classification codes as I explained. So these combinations are done and the search is uh, conducted on a ungiven patent database, okay? Now we will see uh, that now, I, as I said, this is restriction of 20 years. So say from 2001 to 21, I conduct the search. My jurisdiction is also defined. I say I want to understand only whether it is in US. Now, uh, what I retrieved was 38 results. Okay, so this was relevant to the delivery system for insulin through the oral cavity. Now, out of the 38, two of uh, inventions, which are two patent documents I found, which were exactly relevant to what the company is proposing. Okay, so you can see the first one is of uh, Mr. Rao and the second one is of Aquative uh, Therapeutics. Now, if we go through the detailed description, through the claims, through what has been covered in these claims, it can be seen that the invention is or uh, whatever has been proposed is very close uh, to what has been described in these two US granted patents. Okay, so the company pharmaceutical composition seems not to have any freedom to operate in a uh, context with D2, okay, and D1. So uh, the company may fall into some kind of a, a legal battle if they go and market their product. So the uh, FTO report basically tells you uh, how long uh, this patent is uh, will stay active as well as when uh, you can go and enter the market and whether what are the existing products in the given jurisdiction. Now with uh, patent landscape reports. Now, as I said, this patent landscape report is, you know, a very huge and bird's eye view of an entire uh, domain. So it is quite an extensive uh, kind of a report which uh, one needs to uh, develop here. So what is a patent landscape report? For a given field, it gives the entire platform overview of that particular domain. So why this is used, you know, this is used for decision makers to understand whether they, uh, what is the current technology focus, what are the recent trends, trends in a given technology, what is a, a techno, whether the technology which they are uh, planning to enter, does it really have any potential, who are the top investors or the, who are the top assignees who are working in a given domain, and then uh, what could be the areas where uh, there is no, you know, there's not much research which has gone into a given domain and could be I can, you know, enter as a company into that domain. So which are the companies that are uh, filing? What are the years in which they are filing? Which is the geographical distribution on which they are focusing? So there are n number of questions uh, which a patent landscape report answers. And these, uh, you know, this is a very extensive kind of search. It needs extensive kind of understanding and uh, it needs to uh, really uh, help the decision makers come to a conclusion by using this kind of a report. Now, who are the beneficiaries uh, from this report? I said, uh, as change slide. So, uh, who are the beneficiaries? So, as I said that, you know, these reports are extensive and it is uh, for the decision makers that it is required. So, uh, the researchers and the innovators, what does a researcher understand from a patent landscape report? It helps the researcher to provide the current uh, technology trends which are happening or improve on or modify whatever they are working on. For a business development team, it helps to identify assignees who are working. So a competitor it could be, or it could also be a part, you know, where they plan to go for a merger with that company. So yeah, understand what can be the business ventures or in and out licensing opportunities. So this could be one of the questions that is answered by the patent landscape report. For policymakers, it could be strategic decision, which is related to R&D investments. Uh, what uh, can be the prioritization of tech transfer, 
for human resource recruiters a patent ability landscape report can focus on you know understanding who are the leading innovators in a given uh, field or in a given domain and for the legal uh, team this uh, helps to understand any new r and d opportunities which are available in a given field so it also uh, will uh, analyze what are the gray areas or the white spaces also the crowded area for a given technology so a uh, patent landscape report is a uh, very uh, wide very well analyzed and it needs lot of uh, time and understanding of a given domain before we enter into a patent landscape report now uh, to understand uh, how this report is and what it uh, uh, derives for the decision makers we we'll take an example of shampoo compositions which comprise of uh, gel networks okay so what will be the question that we want to understand here is what are the technology trends uh, what is the leading markets to this formulation who uh, are what is the primary or the secondary technology which is involved who are the top companies who are filing in this domain which are the top players uh, uh, who are uh, filing and in which year and is there any kind of assignee collaboration which has happened okay now what do i uh, create as search words here so search uh, instructions will be what anything that is related to compromising of gel network so you have to first understand what is shampoo composition and what are gel network so there we try to shortlist few keywords say a uh, relevant which i have uh, selected here is fatty alcohol so it could be sterile alcohol uh, cetyl alcohol any anionic surfactants cationic surfactants so these are the ones which are commonly used in uh, shampoo compositions and now how do we combine this with relevant keywords and classification codes so uh, in combination with the technical keywords like fatty alcohols what we need to, uh, to address as the end user is the hair preparation so what where it has been used as a shampoo composition so any kind of hair preparation having a fatty alcohol say a gel network gel matrix and so on and so forth so these are the combinations which we have been using and the classification codes so under which categories patents have been granted or have been filed and then the databases which we used and this is how search queries develop so you can see uh, this is a gel a network and or all these combinations okay so we are looking at a case study where the uh, shampoo composition comprising of gel network and we are trying to understand what is the patent landscape report in this case so uh, this is a huge uh, bucket list of results that i have got which we have been retrieved and i have categorized into say what is the claim uh, which uh, what is the claim that uh, tells about this uh, gel network what is the focus what are the uh, focus of the invention who is the assignee what is the prior art date and so on and so forth okay now out of this bucket list say of say 1000 results if i get for this case this is how i going to analyze a patent analytical report now why this is uh, in diagrammatic because it this this report is basically to take certain decisions you know so it has to be very clear it has to be very precise now uh, you can understand from say the first uh, diagram the first graph we show that how are the technology trends so it can be seen that the uh, patents in which year they were filed what was the number in which they were filed but this is for a given field of shampoo compositions with gel networks the second uh, uh, second pie diagram you can see is who are the top players in this area so from this analysis i understand that yes procter and gamble is the topest which is followed uh, say by uh, l'oreal then it is henkel it is dubrizol and then so on and so forth unilever so each uh, of my uh, like shampoo composition domain with gel network helps me to understand who is filing in which domain and who are the top uh, company players in this area now the third part will tell me which are the leading markets so in which countries uh, uh, this kind of patents have been filed for this formulation so you can see the us has maximum number of uh, applications which were filed which is uh, comes down to uh, australia so uh, you know this also tells the jurisdiction in which maximum number of filings have been done and what is the legal status of the patent so it can uh, be seen that 40 to 52% of the patents have been granted 5% have been uh, expired 8 uh, 16% have already been lapsed so uh, what uh, this actually helps a decision maker to understand is 
in which countries they need to go, which are the domains in which uh, there is maximum number of filing, where, uh, or where are the white spaces which are available, and what are the uh, what are the application years, so which is the maximum number of time these applications were filed. Is a difference between expired and lapsed? A lapsed is, you know, if I don't pay uh, fees or I just say I just don't want to continue with this patent. Maintenance fees are not paid or sometimes, you know, even after the reply to the patent, I just say I don't want to pay the fees. This a patent gets automatically lapsed. Expired is I complete my 20 years of uh, grant and then it gets expired. So once the patent is lapsed, it's... Uh, you, you cannot remove it. it. Yes, it doesn't work. Okay. okay. Uh, can, the, can I add something with you, Yes, ma'am. Yes, please. Yeah. So these uh, lapsed maybe by various reasons, like um, whenever patent office uh, gives the first examination report, and if you will not uh, reply in a given time, uh, what is uh, requested by patent office, still it gets lapsed. So all the statutory requirements, if the inventor will not follow, the patent will get lapsed. Yeah, thanks, ma'am. Uh, so this is also another analysis which we can understand uh, from uh, a patent landscape report. Uh, so as I said, it could tell us about assignee collaboration. So Procter and Gamble it uh, uh, took up you know three companies or uh, three say companies or startups who are very close to what they were working on. So uh, which is the market is also favored by the top. Um, Assignee. So there are n number of conclusions which can be uh, drawn from a patent landscape uh, report, but this requires a very in-depth understanding of the technology as well as uh, what is the thing that a uh, client is looking at before making a decision. Uh, now, I'll, uh, I think we have 15 or uh, 10 minutes, 5 minutes more. No? Yeah. yeah, I will uh, just quickly go through the state of art report. This is our last example. And then we will just uh, sum up to understand, uh, you know, what each report says and when it can be used. Okay, so state of art report. I, as I said, this is a prior art report, and it tries to answer the question: What are the existing technologies in a given field? Uh, what work has been previously done? What was a problem that was discovered? How the problem has been addressed? So it helps me uh, to stop from reinventing the wheel, as I said. And uh, why it is carried out to uh, be, uh, to make a decision before one enters into that field. So if it is really crowded, could be I can understand the white space and go into something which is uh, you know less uh, traded upon. So a very quick example of an uh, prior art search. Uh, so this is for an alcohol extract of pisum sativum seeds. Now pisum sativum is the P. That is uh, mutter, uh, mutter that we eat. And this has, uh, it was an applicant, we found out that it has an application for anti osteoporotic as an anti osteoporotic agent. Now, what do I do in this case? We follow the same steps. We first uh, identify what are the keywords, what are the classification codes, what are the databases, and develop a search strategy here. We uh, get a bucket list. So this bucket list, we can uh, analyze. This could be whatever is the number of patents that have been shortlisted. And then we find the closest prior act. Now, this is a different concept. So what is close to the uh, concept that you have put forth in your invention is very important. And that needs to be well understood by the person who is searching for this uh, kind of report and going to put forth an opinion on uh, the search. So there are, uh, say, three prior acts that I find which are close uh, to the concept of uh, bison uh, satyrin being used as an osteosporotic uh, agent. So uh, from this, I find, uh, you know, in the summary, we can uh, say that the close prior art is the first prior art, which uh, says that an uh, P already has the, the bison sativum already discloses the antiosporotic activity for healthcare food product compromising of vegetables. So it gives it has given examples there. So what do we conclude from this? Okay, so such kind of search, and we say that yes, there are very closer prior acts from a state of search. We understand that this activity has already been reported, and if uh, one needs to uh, this activity needs to be evaluated for inventive step and enablement of the proposed invention. So if a prior art is already given this, and if one wants to really file for a patent or one wants to know, you know, how I can take it further because already a problem has been addressed, a state of art or a prior art search report will help you understand those nitty-gritties. 
So other uh, reports, as I said, we have white space analysis. Now the important question is when do I stop searching? So I've been uh, saying that we get a set, we get a set of you know thousand results, we get a set of five thousand, uh, five hundred uh, set. So when do I know? you know, when to uh, stop the search because the search is unending thing. There are new data which keeps on adding. So it is very clear for freedom to operate because it is a very defined kind of search. But in case of patentability or say a landscape report, one understands that, you know, if he puts on multiple search strings with different combinations and at the end it is resulting in a same kind of a, a patent set or a result set, it can be said that, you know, it is uh, really a good set that you have retrieved and we can stop searching. Or it is real, uh, from your central idea, there is a lot of uh, divergence which is happening when you're getting the result set. So we call those as noise patents or noise search results. So it has just, you know, one or two keywords are similar, but it, the concept is totally different. At such a time, one needs to stop the search. Uh, so we we'll quickly uh, summarize on what is patent analytics. As I said, it is very important to understand why one needs to do a search. So accordingly, a patent uh, report or a patent analytical report needs to come out. So if you don't understand why you're doing a search, the results or uh, the conclusion from these reports will be different. It is very important uh, to develop a very uh, stringent kind of a search strategy, which has very good keywords. You need to understand the technology, what all uh, different uh, keywords can be included in it, what can be the assignees, what are the patent uh, IP, IPC codes that can be included. It is, uh, you know, mapping of the patents for relevant details. So this can be done by going through the abstract, what is the claim, what is the uh, claim that is, you know, actually uh, covering uh, legally what the claim is covering. So that is very important when you go for any patent analytical study and analyzing and generating reports. So when we generate a report, the report should be very conclusive and it should address the question that was asked by your client. So uh, this is a summary of all that we have discussed. So patent ability search report, what are the question that uh, is solved by this report? It is to understand is there an invention is patentable. When a patent landscape, it gives a broader overview for the management to decide upon what are this technology, what is, what is the domains, who are the active players, what are the years in which they were filed, and what is the market in which they are operating. Freedom to operate, very specific search. It tells you whether to market in a given geographical area, so very specific, avoids any kind of, uh, to avoid any kind of infringement. Infringement analysis is done basically on the claims. I have not taken examples of this because it is, uh, you know, a very uh, more of a understanding of technology and uh, uh, dissecting the claims. So we've not gone into that part as of now. Then uh, what is the scope of a search? Uh, so I said for each of this uh, report, the uh, scope differs. So when we say freedom to operate, it will be only the claims of the patent. When we say a uh, patentability landscape, it could be the patents worldwide and all mainly all the fields. And then when we go for a novelty search, it is a patent publications all over the world. Who will be benefited from each of this uh, reports? The researchers for patentability or novelty search before he goes to file any kind of uh, application. As I said, for landscape, it is for the decision makers. Freedom to operate any researcher, corporate, uh, corporate uh, entity who wants to enter into other jurisdictions. And when to do research is very important. So when I, uh, it is before writing an application, the first part, the patent landscape report will also help at an ideation stage. So I need to, if the technology is overcrowded, the domain is overcrowded, should be, and don't need to enter into that uh, domain at this stage. Can find out new uh, areas where one company can enter and invest in their R&D. For freedom to operate, uh, it is before launching a product into the market. And as you can see, there are certain search restrictions for all of these reports. So uh, just the last slide at TechX, we do provide a service for search, uh, search and analytics. So we have access to all of the paid databases and a very good team who uh, does all these kind of reports, whatever I have explained. So there are any queries, any help that is required, you can just write to us at t2 at venturecenter.co.in. Our team will uh, respond back to it. Yes. So thank you from my end. Uh, any questions, then we can just take those up. Yeah. Thanks, Vidula, for this uh, comprehensive cover. 
of the broad topic. Uh, there's one question in the chat box. Uh, what are the factors on which patent infringement analysis depends? Is it analysis of patent claims? Or, and what is the difference between validity and invalidity report? How is it different? Okay, uh, so uh, see, patent infringement analysis, yes, it depends upon your claim because uh, claims is the uh, thing that gives a legal uh, protection uh, to your uh, uh, to your invention. So if I'm in in if I'm uh, you know infringing on someone else's invention, can be known only by studying the claim. So that is uh, so that is what is called as uh, patent infringement. But in invalidity uh, search or validity search is, you know, if I want to, I'm a competitor, say I'm a Procter & Gamble and uh, say you are Unilever and we are uh, filing on the same domain of shampoo compositions. I'm taking the same example. So there, you know, uh, I have a product, okay, and which is similar to, and you have already filed a patent on that. And I need to prove that your claim is invalid. So in that case, or uh, in that case, also claim analysis is done, but it is done through a, a, a place where you know I can try to see that your patent uh, either gets uh, uh, your patent doesn't uh, get granted or it uh, it is you know considered to be as invalid. So that is where an invalidity uh, kind of search is done. Yeah. So there's one more question on uh, the binding for TLR and FTO. Are they binding? I, 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 sorry, but I am not. Uh, uh, Sankar Rao, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, yeah thank you for unmuting me uh, and allowing me to ask the question. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. So, for example, if I'm a law firm, I'm giving FTO analysis and uh, TLR analysis. Does these are binding? Like, so the client will go ahead with uh, my analysis. Tomorrow we can say that, yeah, you gave an analysis and based on that analysis, I carry forward and somebody sued for the infringement. So how, how a legal perspective can see the TLR and uh, the active analysis in that perspective? I hope you can understand. I'm not clear about TLR. I mean, uh, whatever, ma'am. TLR or FT1 analysis. So I'm a law firm. So if any client came and asked for the FT1 analysis, mm -hmm. that, then my part is done. So he proceed further based on my results. So yes. he, he go ahead and um, uh, marketed his project product in uh, India or uh, elsewhere. So based on my report. Tomorrow you'll say, and somebody uh, claiming that. Um, see, when we give an FTO analysis in our case, uh, it is see there are many applications which might not be published. So because uh, they have not completed their uh, duration, so in such a case, you know, usually as a, a legal firm or usually as patent analytic uh, analytical people, we give a disclaimer that this is up to this, uh, you know, certain to our knowledge and up to the given period that we are uh, giving you this uh, kind of an FTO analysis report. So that is how uh, usually our analytical reports are safeguarded. Uh, but from the legal point of view, uh, I, I have no idea how uh, it can be defended in if, you know, a client comes and says, you know, I went ahead because of you, because we usually give a disclaimer stating that, you know, this is up to this uh, certain keywords and up to this uh, date or date for an FTO. So anything that is not published uh, anyways, none of us can view it in for a given up to a given period. Okay, the next question is, how many hearings can be called upon by the patent examiner, by Indian and also by foreign patent examiner? Okay, so this I think uh, Purvashi can answer better because uh, this is related to uh, patent, uh, you know, patent grant and all this. Purvashi, are there? Hello. Yeah, yes. so I'll just read out the question to you. How many hearings can be uh, called upon by the patent examiner, either by Indian or the foreign examiner? Yeah, so the hearing in India happens only once. So, uh, and also that is for 30 minutes hearing is there. So in that, whatever objections which are raised in a uh, hearing notice uh, that we have to uh, like uh, answer it within that 30 minutes. And that is the only one chance that we get uh, to answer or to uh, satisfy or to prove that uh, no objections which are raised in hearing notice uh, to examiner. So only once hearing happens in India. 
So uh, I thanks, Guruji. Yeah. Uh, so um, Amit, uh, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Yeah, uh, I'm asking like that. Uh, uh, product to patent mapping, right? In case of uh, physical products, uh, we can do a claim chart based mapping. That is easier. But with respect to process innovations, how easily it can be done, right? And apart from claim chart mapping, is there any other methods or uh, tips for product based innovation, product to patent mapping? Uh, so there is no easy uh, way as such for any kind of analytical reports, you know. So the basic uh, thing that I've been pointing out uh, from uh, the start of the thing is, you know, you need to understand what is the end uh, thing that you're looking at. So if you uh, say you're looking for a product and you want to understand whether this, uh, say what is the uh, domain that it has been covered internationally. So in that case, you know, uh, your analysis will be different. Your, uh, your search fields will be different. So there you need to go into even understand not only uh, the claims, but even the description or the best embodiment uh, that has been defined in a given patent document. But if you are looking, uh, say that uh, you have a device and you want to understand whether, you know, if you're going to file for the, that product and you want to understand what is there in the prior art. So your search fields and your search analytics will be uh, different. So there is, uh, you know, the basic question is what you want to get from these reports is very important. It is not a general or a Google kind of search that uh, can answer such questions. So you have to be very focused. You have to be, uh, you know, very well defined when you go for any uh, kind of this report. So uh, a single report or a single uh, kind of a search stream will result in one uh, answering your one question. But if you want to have multiple uh, kind of answers for a given uh, search, you need to multiply do those uh, kind of uh, you know search strings and reports. So okay. uh, there's one more question. Uh, uh, Abhishek wants to understand as a medical device product, with design improvisation, what all reports need to be done as apart from FTO search? Okay, for a so uh, as a design uh, product, what all uh, with a design improvisation? So if you are going to file for a design application, uh, so there you need to understand what is obviously there in the prior art. So it could be a state of art search, uh, because in India there is only design application that is available. We don't have design patents here. Uh, then uh, FTO, if you're obviously la launching uh, that product into any other jurisdiction, that will also help. And if you are going to invest, uh, say, further in that technology or further in improvisation, could be a very short and defined uh, patent uh, landscape report can also help you to understand what are the market players doing, what are uh, what are the other products which are uh, present in the in your field or in that uh, product design which is there. So that actually gives you a bird's eye view of something which you must have missed while uh, searching in the prior art. It could you know it could uh, help you to understand through a patent landscape report. Can I add something, Vidula? Yes, ma'am, please. Uh, so whenever you are improving on the existing product, first uh, report, you need to find out the infringement analysis, right? Find out whether whatever you have invented over to the existing uh, existing products, whether really it is uh, not infringing in the existing product that you have to find out. Secondly, you also have to find out the white space analysis. Like where there is a where there is a gap and whatever you have um, improvised the product, whether that is filling the existing gap. So these two kind of reports for the um, improvisation of product is very important. Yes, yeah. Uh, so there's one more question on uh, what is when the patent portfolio and due diligence? Okay, uh, so patent uh, portfolio, you know, uh, every company, uh, when they do any kind of uh, innovation or research or any R&D uh, activities, uh, they maintain a patent portfolio as to protect all whatever is being invented at their organization. So this portfolio, say, uh, same example of shampoo composition. So what I do is I say I use it for hair, I do certain more improvisations and I also help it to increase the texture, the volume and everything. So these uh, improvisations or anything which is added to an existing creates a patent portfolio 
where the competitor it becomes difficult for the competitor to come into that field so i have an entire portfolio for uh, shampoo ranging from a to uh, say d or a to e okay so that is how i maintain my patent portfolio now what is due diligence is you know when there are certain uh, companies which take over other mergers and uh, acquisitions which happen in such a case uh, to understand what is the status of our patent portfolio so it could be you know these uh, there could be certain are there any infringement cases which are happening on your uh, given patent or you know what are the patent number of patents that have expired what, some patents must have lapsed so whenever a company is taking over any other company's patent portfolio due diligence is done to understand the legal status of all these uh, patents so this is a very uh, broad overview and difference between uh, not like kind of, I can't say a difference, but these are uh, what is patent portfolio and due uh, due diligence. Anything else, ma'am, you would like to add? Uh, yeah, as you mentioned uh, that during the merger and acquisition, like say if if uh, some organization has a big portfolio, normally when merger acquisition happens, for during the mergering. The entire portfolio will be taken by a acquisition company. So it's not that uh, one patent is taken. Suppose Encel is having a patent portfolio on new applications of polymer or slow release polymer. So uh, the patents which are filed, like they all patent on addition and the uh, small improvement in the improvisation patent, whole portfolio will be taken by some company, say like Procter Gamble. So that is why the patent portfolio is absolutely important and company or any research organization need to maintain those portfolios. Yeah, that's all. Okay, yeah, yeah thanks, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Vidula. Uh, thank you, Vinita, ma'am, for your comments also. Uh, thanks, Vidula, for this wonderful session. Uh, let me announce the next session, which is coming up on Tuesday, 24th of Jan at 4 p.m. again, same at the same time. And the topic is uh, technology strategy. Our speaker for next time is Dr. Hiran Vedam. So please do join us for the next session as well. Uh, uh, we will remind you uh, towards that date uh, for joining up. And please give us your feedback. Uh, we see that you, uh, people have not filled up the feedback forms. It is very, very important for us to receive your feedback so that we can incorporate some of your suggestions in our upcoming sessions. So please uh, give your feedback. Thank you everyone for joining and uh, we will stop for today. Thank you Vidula for such a nice informative talk. Thanks, thanks much.